Hello everyone and welcome to Unfiltered. My name is Matt and in today's video we are going to review Hocus Pocus 2 on Disney Plus. Which yes, I know, I'm late. So I know lots of individuals are saving this for Halloween viewing so there are still some people that haven't watched the movie. So before we get started I came into the movie kind of thinking I'm not sure if I'm going to enjoy it and a lot of that has to do with three things. One, the critics reaction and the early reviews and then two, audience reviews um, that were also negative about the movie. And then the third thing was that I did enjoy the original and I was nervous that potentially I was not going to enjoy the sequel on Disney+. Plus. A few things to remember is that the original did not have such great critic review and audiences really didn't show up to watch the original even after let's say a few audience members did go see it so it's peers that didn't really have a good word of mouth at the time one of my early memories of the first movie even before let's say fully watching it was my parents driving um, down a road and we were driving past a drive-in and on the screen i got to see uh the scene where Winnie, Sarah, and Mary are with Zachary, right? <laughs> and in the, their um, home in the beginning scene of the movie. And I remember wanting to see it as a kid, and I didn't get to watch it until it was actually on home video. And I think that's how many people watched it, and that's where it became, you know, a cult um, kind of following and hit. And... Because of that, we are finally getting a sequel. Now, I'm not a person who's against actually revisiting things because you're always going to have the original. So for me, like when they go and change things in the beginning, when I was younger, um, I would be very upset, let's say, if they changed something. And now I'm just like, you know, whatever. <laughs> I think there's so many things that happen in life with COVID and everything that I'm just like, Psh. I'm okay to revisit things. You know what? It's never going to change the original. The original is always going to be there. So in this story, we follow a similar formula that a black flame candle brings back the Sanderson sisters. And we do have young protagonists who are along for this adventure. And we already can anticipate that the Sanderson sisters are not going to make it through the end of this movie. So I already went and kind of already with that preconceived notion, which, you know, I was like hoping that they would maybe change the formula a little bit, and they did. Um, so in the beginning of the movie, we do start in the past, just like the original, but this time we get to see younger versions of the Sanderson sisters. And it's kind of interesting that Winnie kept her ha same haircut, um, never decided to change it. Uh, so I thought that was kind of interesting. And we discover that the sisters themselves are kind of run out of town uh, of Salem and run into the Forbidden Forest. Now, in the Forbidden Forest, they get to meet a witch uh, who is about to eat them. And I thought it was very interesting that she lures Sarah with her song, which is later sang or sung by Sarah herself to lure children when she's older. And the witch stops, you know, decides not to eat them because she senses Winnie is one of her kind, which is a witch. And she also presents Winnie with the book. Now, as far as the witch, I thought it was kind of interesting that she had very modern makeup. Um, so, I was like, that's a little out of place because usually in the first movie and everywhere else in this sequel, when we're in the past, everything seems kind of of that time. But the witch with her makeup um, does not. Now, I actually did enjoy the witch um, in that scene. And in there, she does give a warning to Winnie advising like, hey, there's a spell in there and do not use it. It's like for ultimate power. And... That's foreshadowing the future I already knew in the beginning. I was like, oh, I'm kind of interested. Let's press the red button, you know. So <laughs> then we cut to present time where we are introduced in Salem to our new younger, 
characters, who are Becca, Cassie, and Izzy. Now, throughout the story and the movie, we discover that Becca has powers. Now, I really didn't mind um, that addition to the movie, um, because it did allow the movie to kind of use additional special effects with present-day CGI, which are a welcome thing uh, for the movie and the franchise. Now, we do not learn much about the characters and kind of their background. We know that they're friends and that Cassie has kind of fallen away from Becca and Izzy, who usually have this routine of going into the woods, uh, the Forbidden Forest, and uh, doing kind of some rituals. Now, that does sacrifice from getting to know these characters and potentially does kind of put something at, off-putting with the stakes of the movie, so you don't really feel like when they're being chased as you did in the original. But the trade-off is that you get more time with the Sanderson sisters themselves. So, you know, you know, I guess like if you've been waiting a long time to revisit the characters, you're not going to mind that as much. Now we are also introduced to the shopkeeper or shop owner, Gilbert, who actually um, makes a new black flame candle gives it to Becca so she can light it and then bring back the Sanderson sisters. Now, fortunately for Gilbert, the Sanderson sisters use him forcefully to get ingredients to cast the forbidden spell that we learned from the beginning of the movie. And he has to go find these ingredients while they hunt for the blood of their enemy, well, descendant of their enemy, which is the mayor of Salem, and also Cassie's father. So I thought it was interesting that the movie did take a twist here, um, not following, like, let's, we're going to again suck the life of all the children. Um, now, that does mean that Sarah doesn't get to sing her song, and that means that Mary is not really, you know, stiffing up kids too much. So for them, you know, you're like, oh, okay. Uh, not sure what really to do here, but... There is the slapstick kind of comedy with uh, Sarah and Winnie um, that you get to visit through here. And I was like, okay, I'm willing to go down this journey. No problem there. Now, through the movie, you are getting uh, more musical numbers. Now, they're not as cinematic as the original. But again, the original movie only had one musical number. So I didn't mind them. I think if anyone, let's say probably watched the original and that musical scene was not for you and you kind of felt like it threw the movie off, then I think the addition of additional mu musical numbers in the sequel may not be for you. But again, it's a family movie and I really didn't mind them. Uh, I thought they were actually pretty good. Now, there is a little more flying in the movie. Um, and you get introduced to kind of a scene that was from the original where they're going and flying about. And this time Mary has like these two robotic, um, like Roombas, uh, that she uses to fly. And I thought that was kind of interesting twist with the modern technology. Um, are they going to have to wait until there's new cleaning supplies, um, to bring them back? Um, but this time the actual actors may be retired. So... We can't wait that long if you're going to do a sequel. Throughout the movie, we're going through our usual kind of, you know, chase scenes and things of like that. Um, there was a scene that kind of some individuals have said that it's put them out of touch with the movie, which there's a scene where Mary is flying by a window and sees a scene from the first movie. Now, in my head, there's two ways that I've kind of explained it. I said, oh, maybe Allison from the original movie actually made a movie about her experience and got the towns, those two townspeople to reenact that scene that they had with the Sanderson sisters. And that's what they're watching. Or two, Mary is watching a TV and is just brought back to that original experience of when she first watched a mo movie and got to meet Satan and his wife. So those are the two ways I tried to explain it for continuity. But, I mean, you let me know what you think. Maybe just a sloppy placement um, from the actual uh, writers or director in the movie. So as we get to the ending, the ending surprised me. Um, I thought we were going to go down the same path where 
They were kind of going to disappear, um, not of their own choice. Uh, and this time we had the final scene where Becca gets to use some powers. Winnie decides to use the spell that is forbidden. And as the book indicated, there's going to be consequences for using that spell. And the consequences are the loss of Mary and Sarah, which I actually thought was very interesting and actually hit me a lot harder than I thought it would because I actually empathized with Winnie um, and the love for her sisters and their loss. So Winnie was like saying, I don't care about the power. I don't care about anything. All I want is my sisters and begs Becca to help her. Now, Becca, with her newly formed coven of Izzy and Cassie, decide to help Winnie. And with the help also of the book, because now the book has gravitated towards Becca, which I kind of thought was interesting throughout the movie as well, that this time you get a little more personality with the book, making decisions, and also other scenes where it's trying to like hide um, from Becca. So in this scene, the book is helping Becca and uh, Winnie get united with her sisters. But the catch is, is that Winnie has to go to the other side, that they're not going to come back uh, to Winnie and the world where the living are. And this time Winnie is happy to be reunited with her sisters, and which is a difference uh, from the original movie. So I did like the little twist that we had at the end of the movie. Uh, I do like that, you know, Billy finally gets his rest and that finally people are going to put uh, it right for his story. Because throughout the movie, he's saying like, hey, you know, I wasn't really with Winnie. We weren't together. And people kept on telling me, tell him the story that we were in the shop owner because says, don't worry, <laughs> I'm going to make sure everybody knows your story and we clear things up. So overall, I thought, you know, the movie was actually pretty good. Uh, I think that, you know, it stands on its own. Sure, it does have its flaws. And that's what we want to go into, which is the three things that I really enjoyed about the movie and the three things that were not so great. So as far as the three things I enjoyed, I enjoyed the music. Uh, I enjoyed the special effects. I thought that they were pretty good um, when they were utilized in the movie. Uh, I also liked seeing Jessica, Kathy, and Bette Midler, you know, reprise their roles. It was enjoyable. Now, there were a few jokes, yes, that did not quite land. I think there was a scene where Sarah Jessica Parker um, breaks into Kathy's, uh, Cassie's house uh, with Sarah, uh, with Mary and Winnie, and Bette Midler says, hey, sp let's spread out, and then Sarah spreads her legs out. Um, of course, Sarah has always been ditzy, but um, it really didn't land as well. And there was a scene where they're talking to Siri and they all scream. Um, and you would think that since before Winnie was actually tricked for um, when they went to the school and they were kind of in the kiln, uh, there was that little video uh, tape recording of the French speaking woman in the radio. So I was thinking, well, would you fall for that twice? And I think that's like one of the difficult things when we're getting to the not so good is um, there were some kind of sloppy Easter eggs or kind of clues back that you would go, wouldn't they already know about this? Like when Becca uses the salt on the floor and blocks her power, they're like, wait, how does she do that? Now, salt in the other movies was explained to kind of be a protective barrier uh, against witches. So unless there was something else that I should be expecting with Salt, that was a little confusing. And then, like I said, then with Siri, uh, you know, I was like, don't you know about, you already before experienced a radio talking, another box talking, and now you have Siri talking, and you feel confused. But of course, this time, maybe she's interacting with them. I think the other area was the kind of sloppy Easter egg, like I talked about, was the uh, video of the past first movie um, that the couple is watching as Mary looks through the window. Um, for continuity wise, it didn't really make much sense, but you know, I think that that's okay. So one, sloppy Easter eggs, not so good. Uh, two, 
not all the original cast is back. I actually would like to see, you know, Allison and the other characters um, come back. Now, some scenes uh, did feel a little rushed uh, in the movie. Um, and I think that's, you know, once the Sanderson sisters are back, everything's going really fast. Like when they break into Cassie's house, um, that scene was just really, just really quick. It almost felt as quick as the little clip in the trailer. Now, as indicated, overall, I did enjoy the movie. And I would recommend, you know, if you did like the original, just to give it a try and watch it. Um, I'm actually excited for them to actually come back for a third movie, which is hinted at the end of the movie, because there's another black flame candle waiting, waiting to be lit. Now, I'm probably going with the unpopular opinion by saying I think more things need to be brought back, because... I'm okay with us revisiting things, and I think it just feels nice to have a distraction right now um, with everything going on in the world and the news. So, Hocus Pocus 2, thank you for returning, and I can't wait until maybe we have another adventure with you. Now, that adventure may be repeat viewing if we don't get a sequel. So what did you think about the movie? And leave a comment like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Hit that notification bell to get notification of other videos. Thank you for watching, and until next time, stay safe. <laughs>